I'm Brian Hall and this is The Narrative Art. Today I'd like to share with you a clip from a documentary about a writer named Harry Cruz. A lot of people don't know who he is, but he's a very interesting man and a really exceptional writer. He was known for his grit-lit style, a rough south, which reflected his upbringing in rural Georgia. He often said that you should write from experience, and that's exactly what he did. He often wrote about freaks and outcasts, many stories from his childhood. He had many scars and a hard upbringing, and it shows in every word of his writing. There's one story about him when he was a child that I remember it and stuck with him his whole life, where he was flung into a uh, boiling cauldron of water that they used to burn the skin off of pigs. And I remember reading that he was playing some game with the other children and somehow he got pushed into the cauldron of water. And when he came out of the water, he said it was though he was dead. They all stared at him as though he was dead. And they all waited you know, for something to happen. And he said he didn't feel anything. But then he heard his mother screaming and after a minute or two, the shock wore off and literally his skin started melting and his fingernails completely came off. He was incapacitated for a very long time after that. And it seemed that that did leave a deep scar and that's part of the reason he wrote the way he wrote about freaks and outcasts because it's very evident that he felt like an outcast even in a place like Bacon County where there were all sorts of characters even there he kind of stood out unfortunately most of his novels are out of print but I left a link in the description to one of his more popular novels if you'd like to take a look I hope you enjoy the clip Frost said it all gets bad when it gets too bookish. Uh, you need, to, the book needs to smell like sweat and blood and shake the reader with all those abstract nouns you've ever heard, love and hope and mercy and compassion. It ought to do that. It ought not to smell of other books. It ought not to continually force your thinking and your concentration and your focus into other books. Just to learn more from a man named Graham Greene, an Englishman, novelist, should have won a Nobel Prize and didn't, died not too long ago. Um, I read everything he's written, and I loved him, and I studied his work, and I learned from him, and I aped him. Robert Louis Stevenson said, all writers are sedentary apes. Now, he means by sedentary, we know that, sitting down. But don't, don't mistake the other word, apes. He means aping, mocking, trying to do, and that's what we are. We find us a guy that we say, hey, in my case, Graham Greene, why? God, he's an Englishman, you're from Bay County, why, why Graham Greene? Because whatever, Graham, whatever else Graham Greene does, he always tells you a story. None of this old introspective musing and grousing and chewing your liver. Uh-uh, let's get on with the story. Keep me up tonight with this story you're telling me. I want to turn the page. He did that, and I tried. I was what I, all I ever wanted to be and all I think of myself as being, if I think about myself as being, is a storyteller. That's all. I just tell stories. The world wants to take away from you everything that makes you you. Just give you a small, obvious example. Every school I've ever been in, including the Houston University I teach in now, those schools and families and churches, certain any kind of institution, religion, but they, they like to talk of well-rounded people. You want to be well-rounded. If you're well-rounded, why you can just get along with anybody or live anywhere. Or, or you're just, you're just way around it. Well, let me tell you something, Jack. What's been done in this world and accomplished in this world 
And the reason we're warm in the winter and cool in the summer and got enough to eat and the rest of it is because of jagged men and women. Jagged ones. They with sharp corners. They weren't well round. Edison wasn't well rounded. Ford wasn't well rounded. Hemingway wasn't well rounded. They were they were all like a because a, a, give you a, all analogies are bad. This is probably particularly bad. You think of a think of a think of a a, a buzz saw round whatever I guess it's called buzz saw Bla, round blade saw skill saw with a, some teeth on it. Well, them jagged edges cut right through oak. Try to do that without the teeth. What institutionalized everything is trying to do to you and to me is to take our teeth away. The way he says that at the end, it gives me chills. Um, I think about even like being in college and how they, anytime you kind of step outside of the box of certain forms that they teach you, um, it's almost like they slap you on the hand for it. They, you'll get a worse grade. The more creative you are, they tend to give you a worse grade. And I think about the military, how they tear you down to build you back up, but to build you back up in a way that you will function best for them. And for some people, that's a good thing. Some people need discipline and a path to follow in life. But I think for creative people and artists, it can be the worst thing because once they put you inside that box, if you don't know how to get out of it, you will never have an interesting perspective. You'll never have a unique perspective. And that's where all great art comes from. It comes from a unique perspective. From somebody, as Harry Crew said, it's not well-rounded because they see things differently. They see something in a very unique light. And that's where almost all the great works come from. So I hope that you enjoyed that clip and that you got something out of it. And remember, stay inspired and to keep writing. Until next time.